everybody. My name is Michelle P. Jones, and I am the Writer's Coach. I am so excited to share on Conversations with Pearl. Hello, sunshine. Good to see you again. Had to walk out to let you back in. Stuck in a storm of a relationship. Lost my fire. Oh, and I forgot. Welcome again to another Conversations with Pearl, and I'm so excited to have you join us today and sit back, get your writing pad out, because we're going to have a great time. And you know, I always like to make sure you're taking notes from all these amazing speakers and guests that I have come to you today. All right. So today our guest is Michelle P. Jones, and she is the writer's coach and helps writers birth their literary masterpiece, which brings their story to life through the Entrepreneur Academy's course offerings, a personalized strategic plan and coaching services. You guys, I always tell you, you all have a book in yourselves. So I'm so excited. She's going to be joining us today as an Amazon international bestseller author, ordained minister, business and writing strategist, confidence consultant, workshops and seminar facilitator, as well as a podcast executive producer, host, blogger, and inspirational, motivational speaker, Michelle is uniquely positioned to ensure you offer an exceptional literary masterpiece to the marketplace. She specializes in empowering and equipping entrepreneurial creatives and writers, just like you sitting there listening to us, with a strategic plan that contains actionable steps that is going to channel your creativity into a business format designed to position you to attain your goals. She's also the founder and CEO of Bloodsoap Publishing Company, Restore her, restore her ministries, excuse me, and Michelle P. Phillips Incorporated. She is also the host of Unapologetically Michelle. I love that. We should all be unapologetically put your name in there, formerly known as Girls Talk, Real Talk, where she discusses real, relevant, raw, and life changing topics that can positively influence the listener's choices and decision making process, as well. Through her business coaching and publishing services, she educates authors on the systems, processes, techniques, the importance of writing in their unique style, and how best represent your authentic self in the marketplace. So I'm so excited to have Michelle here because she's going to help turn up your life experiences into a story that's not going to only impact the world, but it's going to help create the life you dream of. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you so very much for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. And, you know, we here on Conversations of Pearl, we like to talk about a lot of what you do. Like, we like to talk about being our authentic self, finding who we really are, like really, you know, getting our story out there. Because as I said, we all have a story that are, is in us. And, you know, I often say on my show here that, you know, we come into this world, God has created talents within us. Mm -hmm. And if we're not using those talents, we're cheating ourselves, but really you're cheating me and everybody around you because exactly. God wants you to share those talents and put them out there. And, and I love that you are somebody that helps others do exactly that. So tell us a little bit about how you got started, Michelle. Well, it was kind of crazy. Um, in 2017, I was a business coach with a lot of small and medium sized companies. And I kept saying the same thing over and over to my clients. It was like consistently repeating myself. And so I said out loud one day, I said, you know what? I had to write a book and it stayed with me. And so that was my first book that I put out into the marketplace that I self-published was Grasping Your Success, Six Steps to Starting and Legitimizing Your Business. And it just basically took you through the six basic steps that every entrepreneur must follow to have a legitimized business in the marketplace. And so from there, it was kind of like the bug kind of hit me. And the next year I put out walking and watering my stilettos, how God strengthened my faith walk. 
And the year after that, I participated in an anthology, As For Me and My House, where we talk about our experience as being entrepreneurs to help other individuals not experience some of the same issues that we had. The year after that, I wrote um, Desperate Housewives of Biblical Proportions. And that book is really about the matriarchs of the Israelite um, nation of how they got started and the women that made an impact on the men's lives and that some of their choices, their self-esteem, their personality traits that are still impacting the nation. And so after that, God said, I want you to switch. I want you to switch from business to being a writer's coach. But I haven't really changed anything but the name. And so what I do is I actually teach others how to conduct their writing as a business and how to get their book out in the market in 31 days. I love that. And I love like those stories. Like uh, those are some powerful titles, really powerful, especially the last one, you know, and, and how, you know, what we do in our household is, is impacts everybody around us. You know, I, I often on the show here talk about, we have what we I call formerly known as stay at home moms. I call them CEO moms because they're running the household. They're not sitting in a four wall home or apartment mm-hmm. or wherever they are eating bonbons all day long. They're running a household. They're making sure the business of the house is getting done. And part of that role too is to inspire and empower everybody in their house to communicate, to take time for themselves to have that self-esteem, you know, and with the, especially if you have children. Right. And I love that you've taken that and you're like going, let's really teach you how to do this because I can't tell you how many times I speak with and coach with women and they're like, well, nobody wouldn't want to hear my story. I mean, I work with a nonprofit and I, I co- was with them last week and I was like, listen, each and every one of you ladies in this room, you have a story to share. And you're going to empower somebody because somebody's about to walk, not the exact same story you're walking, but they're about to walk something similar and they need to mm-hmm. hear it. Right. So I love right. that you, you take authors through that and you help them, you know, tap inside of them of how to share that story and how to get that out. So let me ask you, I'm going to take you back a little bit before you did this. You're a young girl. Did you, did, were you writing? Did you journal? Like what, what led you down? You know, you started the corporate world of doing this, but like, Inside of you, did you, when you look back and you say, I remember doing that as a little girl? Well, for me, I was, I was a sickly child. I had asthma horribly bad. Um, at least three to four months out of the year, I was in the hospital. And so it was during those times that I developed a love for reading and a love for writing. And I am a chronic journaler. I journal all the time and I've been doing it all of my life. And so some of the, I believe some of the things that God had already placed inside of me started showing itself because that was my release of always being by myself. It gave me an opportunity to go into alternate worlds and experience a world where I wasn't sick, where I didn't have to be in the hospital, where I didn't have to be away from my family. And so it created, and for me, a very vivid imagination. To where I'm actually living out these books that I was reading in my mind. And when I would journal, I would journal about everything that was going on in my life. And it was my opportunity without even realizing it to pour what was in my heart and mind out so that it did not negatively impact me in the way that I have heard it negatively impact other people that have gone through the same things. So it was it was my escape and my outlet at the same time. I love that. Like you saw that story and you found a way to put yourself in that story. And as a little, as a little child, a little girl, you know, when you are sick like that, and you know, even those that are listening right now and have children in the hospital that you know, they're sick and they're in there and in and out. I've known many friends whose kids have got the asthma as well. They're, they're so sick. And sometimes many days in the hospital or at home, not able to go to school with their, with their friends, it can be overwhelming. And for you to like, at a young age, read those stories and go, I'm going to put myself in there. I'm going to take myself out of this environment that I'm in. And I'm, you know, I, I'm stuck, kind of stuck in it. And I'm going to create a story for myself. And, and I feel like in listening to you, I feel like that's where that journey started. Like you mm-hmm. taught yourself 
how to create that story, how to write that story about where you are outside of where you're stuck at. Right. And I think it's right. just so powerful that you are teaching others like from a young child, you took that skill that you learn and you've tapped into it and you're teaching others to do that. And so what I want to ask you next is, so somebody comes in, they're working with you and you know, they, you know, they've got that story and they, they know that story. They want to get out. They want to inspire and they want to empower others with their story, but they feel like they have a block. Take me through somebody that maybe comes in, like, let's say I come in and you know, I've got the story I want to share and I, but I'm blocked. I don't know how to put it on, on words. You know, I actually said to somebody one time, can I just talk it and you just go edit it for me and write it down. So take me through somebody who struggles with that. And when they come in to work with you. Well, one of the first things that I do is we have to get on the same page because when you come in, I don't know what you just experienced prior to coming into my, my presence. So one of the very first things that I take you through is what I call a meditation moment. And so we go through um, this meditation moment where I will have you think on something just random. It could be something like a chewing gum or a blue jay outside or whatever. Whatever comes to mind in that moment, just have you meditate on that for a little bit so you can center your thoughts. Because I'm a firm believer that when we write, we are getting direct downloads from the creator, from God. And so he is giving us what it is that he wants us to say. But we have to make sure the channel is clear. You know, back in the day before we had all of these computers and everything, we used to have the black and white and the color TVs. And we had a thing called white noise. So if you wasn't quite on the channel, you would get all the static, which was the right noise. So what I normally take my clients through is I'll take them through this meditation moment in order to clear out the white noise, to get you in the same frame of mind that I'm in so that we can begin to write. After we do the meditation moment, then I'll take you through a writing prompt, just an arbitrary writing prompt. It could be on any subject, and I'll give you about eight or nine minutes just to free write on that writing prompt. Nothing is right. Nothing is wrong. It's just whatever comes into you, write on it. And then we start our process. So it's kind of like in the wintertime, when you go out to a car and you live in, in areas where it gets cold, you need to warm up that car before you actually take off. It's the same thing in writing. When you are waiting on God to give you the right words that is going to impact, inspire, and motivate somebody else, you have to make sure that you're warmed up to be able to pour out what it is that he's poured into you. And so that's kind of how we get started. And it has worked more times than it has not um, with them. It just means that I need you and me to get on the same page. I, look, I, I'm a big fan of meditation. So I love that you've got meditation involved in there. And I think you're right. I think you have to, you know, we have to clear that, clear that mind and, and get in that same space. Like what you said, I think it was a great visual too. And, and, and I agree with you. Like, I've been, I've been in a couple of books too. I've got another book that just came out, Everyday Women, and it's hit number one. I'm really excited. It's an anthology as well. And I just remember sitting there writing and, and you're right. I felt like, you know, God gives us those words, like those words come out of us and, and we just start writing. And, um, and I just, I, I think it's really powerful to remember that, that we have, as I said, we all, we're an author. We're all an author within. We all have that, that way of doing it. So like, so somebody's worked with you. They've done the book. Everything's all done. They've gone through the edits and they're ready now to get the book out to the world. And that's the scary part, right? Is to get people to visually, you know, to, to see your book, that, mar that whole marketing piece of going, oh, you wrote a book? I didn't see it. You know, like, so tell us about how you help authors do that. Well, that's more of my author's aftercare. Now that we have the book out there, now what? Um, because before we actually get the book, fully out there. I always encourage all of my authors to do a pre-sale so that you can warm up your audience to let them know that this book is out there. You give them an opportunity to be able to experience your book as an ebook and be able to know this is available. So six weeks prior to the actual pre-sale date, then that's when I start having them put tidbits out in social media where they may take a phrase out of the book um, one of the key things that I do with all of my authors is 
that they will pick out five key points in the book that they feel like best describe the book and the subject matter. And so that's what they use in all of their marketing consistently. Because, you know, once we see things over and over again, we pay attention. And so if you're using those exact same five key points over and over again in different ways, it's going to catch people's attention and they're going to be like, well, let me go see what this is about. So then after the book is is launched, it's out there for sale. Then what I do with the authors is we begin to talk about how do you want to utilize your book? Is it going to be a platform for you to do a ministry? Is it going to be a platform for a speaking gig? Is it going to be something that you just did because you wanted to get your testimony out there and you want to be able to hit the podcast circuit or you want to be able to go out there and share it with the world? Or do you just want to deal with book clubs? So we began to brainstorm to see how they are going to best utilize this book so that it maintains relevancy, because we always want our book to be relevant in every audience. Um, The other thing that we talk about is your audience, because all of us have a community. There is a community that is assigned to every individual. Your task is to find that community and then put your information out there, because when people um, buy your books, they are investing in you and they're consuming your product. So you want to make sure that you are where your consumers are. And so we began to look at different ways to get that information out there. And so I'll start them off with tidbits of information, give them examples of what it needs to look like. But I let them know that independent publishers are not responsible to market your book. It's your book. You are the shmi. You are the subject matter expert. So you need to be out there and let them see your face, allow them to get used to you because they need to know you, they need to like you, and then they need to want to buy from you. And the only way they can do that is if they know who it is that is behind this book or that is pushing this book. You are your shmi. I love that. That is so powerful. And you're right, because it's really, it's your book. I mean, mm-hmm. I've seen many friends have done books and it's like, it just sat there and they've not, not, how do I promote it? How do I get it out there? You know, so it's, it's a, it's a whole process. And if yes. you're listening right now and you're thinking about, you want to write a book, you, as you're hearing today, it's a process. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's, it, there is a process. And I love that, that we are talking about that process. So, okay. So you talked earlier, I believe you mentioned about getting the book done in like a 30 day time frame, right? So 31 like, days. So tell Guaranteed. us about the 31 days. Um, so I have a program called the book camp and I take authors through um, a 31 day process. So we would meet once a week and I would teach you the process of writing and publishing. So that when you get to that next step, you won't be scared. You won't find yourself in a situation to where you don't know where to go, what to do, or what it needs to look like. And so in the midst of that, I am teaching you different tips that you can use to self-edit before you send it off to a professional editor. I'm allowing you to understand and learn what the different platforms are. We've got audio books, we've got ebooks, and we have paperback books. But there are also other platform, distribution platforms that are available. You've got uh, KDP, which is Amazon. You also have Ingram um, Sparks. You also have draft to digital You have all of these other platforms. So I make sure that you know all of that information, as well as how to get your five key points, how to be able to discover who your ideal reader is and create that avatar. And then each week you'll have a writing assignment. I will give you so many words that you have to write before we meet again. And so we'll go through the class. And then after the class, we do a chat. And so we talk about your reading. I mean, your writing. We talk about um, what struggles you've had. So it's all things about the author. And we began to break them down. Because what most people don't understand, which is a huge part of the writing experience, is that especially if you are writing nonfiction and you're telling your story, you need to allow the writing process to be a healing period. 
because it is traumatic enough that you went through what you went through. But if you don't heal from it, you're not going to be able to tell the story without it negatively impacting you. And so we go through all of that to begin to get them to understand your writing has a purpose. So we write with a purpose. We write with a goal. We write to tell the story. The word of God says is that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so when you're writing nonfiction, you need to tell that testimony. And I've had people ask me, so how did that work when I'm writing fiction? It's the exact same thing because you have to develop your characters. Your characters will tell the story. And so once you get comfortable with your characters, and you have allowed their personality to come through, they will begin to tell you the story that needs to be told so that you can put that out there in the marketplace. A good friend of mine, Oticia Johnson said, fiction is the best way to use a lie to tell the truth. I love that. Fiction is the best way to tell, I love that. That is so awesome. Say that one more time. Fiction is the best Fiction way. Fiction is the best way to use a lie to tell the truth. That's so cool. That is so awesome. This has been fun. So I, how many authors are you currently working with right now, Michelle? Right now I'm working with two authors. Um, I just had, I just had one author whose book just went live. And I've had two, I was working with another independent publisher to help her author go live. And then I've had two that we just finished up um, in October and November that have gone live. Uh, and the other part that I also do is I train authors how to be independent publishers. So I take you through a six week course and by the time you get finished with me, you know all of the ins and outs of how to run your own publishing company, plus you walk away with a workbook. So not only do you have the training that you have access to forever, but you also have a workbook that you can go back to, flip through it, and, and brush up on anything that you need to know. Last year, I had two authors that I worked with that were authors up under another independent publisher. Both of those authors ended up winning literary awards for their books. And the previous year, my book, Desperate Housewives of Biblical Proportions, won a literary award. That's fantastic. Congratulations. It's Thank really, you. It's fun when it's your baby, right? But it's, yes. even more, it's even more fun when it's somebody you worked on helped them with, with their baby, right? I think that's right. so, so powerful. So uh, tell me this question. I'm going to ask you... Um, who would be your ideal person that you would love to work with, with writing? Um, Michelle Obama. I would love, love, love to be able to do a book collaboration with her. And because I've seen everything that she's had to overcome as the first lady of the United States, as a black woman, and also as a mother who is supporting her husband while she's raising her kids and doing those things. And I really believe that she's not done. I know she, her second book um, launched, but I know that she's not done because there are so many people that need to understand that you may have a professional life, but there may come a time when God calls you from the professional life to be out in the public eye and how to be able to navigate that with grace and still maintain your own identity and not allow the negative to be the portion that you walk away with. I love that. That is such, that, what a great visual of who you want to work with. And I agree with you. She has more stories to share and more, yes. more to put out there for all of us. I just think that's so cool. And like you said, so for me, when you were describing her, those are the ideal clients that I work with. This exactly how you describe Michelle Obama. I love helping women put their cape on so they can take care of themselves first as they then can pour in and, and wear those superpowers for the rest of their family, their job, their career, whatever that is. And, and you're right. Michelle Obama is that example of going, she's, you know, was there for her husband's career very young, right? I mean, he came into the, into the scene at a very young age and then carry that through. And then their daughters, you know, are now as, as she was there as they grew and they grew up in the white house, you know? And so 
and no matter what house it is, whether it's a white house or the small house you're sitting in right now, you know, you need to put your cape on first. And, and she is the example of how to, you know, somebody needs to balance and find that balance and everything. Right. It's so true. I love that. So we're going to do a little shift here. So for the listeners that are listening, we also now have a radio show and we are on 360 radio for women. And so we have, uh, we have two different spots on there. And right now what I want to do is I kind of want to shift and ask Michelle some personal questions. So I, you know, she's done, she's got this great business happening. She's growing. And if you're an author, we're going to put all her information in there. Or if you've thought about writing a book, we're still going to talk about that as well as we go through the rest of the show. But remember, as I said, everybody has a story to, to tell and to share. And it could be a 10 page book. It doesn't have to yes. be a 3000 page book, you guys. I mean, right now I'm working on a book and it's I have I'm going to have spots available and we're talking about raising children of a different ethnicity as an adoptive family. And so I'm excited for that to be, you know, it's in the middle of working on that. But all the things that Michelle has shared today, it definitely, you guys all have a story to share. And even if you just write a story for your children to leave a legacy behind, that's still a story about your family, right? So I, Michelle, I want to ask you, so, you know, you're busy, you're, you're helping these amazing authors do all these great things that you're doing for them. So what does Michelle do for self-care? What does your, you know, how do you make sure that you are also putting your cape on and also doing something for yourself? So kind of walk us through some of the things that you do. Well, there's a couple of things that come directly to mind. I am still a journaler. I journal, uh, matter of fact, I journal daily. So um, I do my journaling every day. And then I have a Bible study that I'm on Monday through Friday. And we're on for about an hour, Everyday Leaders Bible Study with Melanie Egg. And we, Monday through, they're actually on their Sunday through Saturday. I do Monday through Friday. And so it's an opportunity for us to go through the Bible and we use John Maxwell's Bible when we're going through it and we'll read his breakout boxes and and then we'll talk about what we've read and how it relates to today. So that that I actually started right before the pandemic hit and I stayed on there all throughout the pandemic. And so I'm still on there even now. And I was on there this morning and a lot of the conversations that I have keep me relevant to what's going on in the world, but it also allows me to think about how I can use those scriptures to apply to my life. I am the grandmother of four wonderful grandkids. I've got a daughter and two sons myself, and my daughter is the one that has the children. And so I interact with them when I really want to be out and about, I'll go and hang out with them because they're tiring. And then when they over um, stimulate me, I go home. And so I interact with them and I have an 84 year old mother that I visit as much as possible. She lives in Illinois and I'll go see her. And so, and then my prayer life, you know, I, I believe that having conversations throughout the day with God helps not only with my mental health, but with my self care. And also I go and get my nails done every three weeks. So that's something special I do. I will also take walks and give myself an opportunity to change scenes. So I may take myself out to the show. I may take myself out to dinner or to breakfast, something that will change my environment to where I'm getting out and I'm experiencing something different. Because sometimes when you step out of what you've already known into something that is new to you, it allows you to get a different perspective, even about what's going on in your life. And so that's kind of how I deal with my self-care. I love, I love that you gave those great different examples, right? Because self-care isn't just one thing you put in a box and that's what you do every day, right? And, and, and the other thing too is oftentimes when I coach women, they're always like, yeah, but I feel guilty when I'm doing something for myself. And I love that you also gave the examples of saying, Hey, I go get my nails done. I journal, you, you know, I do the Bible say those are things that you do for yourself. And then you also say, I also make time in my schedule to go hang out with those grandchildren or to go uh -huh. see your mom because it's, you know, it's important. We have all those beautiful things we want to be part of. And when we don't do something to put our cape on first and really be that Shiro for ourselves, we right. can't enjoy it. Like, like you said, 
you might go hang out with the grandkids, but you're maybe not going to enjoy it as much because you're tired. You, you know, if, if Michelle isn't taking that time for herself and she's just working on her business of helping these authors, she's going to be exhausted when it comes time to be with her grandchildren. She's going to be like, okay, what time am I getting out of here? I need to get home. I'm tired. Right. Where she could be all in and, and then getting her nails done. I mean, that's so much fun. I, I found a great new nail place here in town and, and I love to go see them. They're, they're, it's so relaxing and I, you know, foot in hand. I just, it's so important, but you know, and then my favorite part you said was journaling. I love to journal. And one of the things that I, I was just on a coaching call with a client and she's never journaled before. I'm like, okay, let's what? start with some. Yeah. She's never journaled 23 years old, beautiful girl. And I'm like, let's start with something simple. I, I'm going to teach you how I learned a journal. And that was, I just took a notebook or took a piece of paper. You can take your phone if you want to and just brain dump whatever's up here in that head between those ears, just write it down somewhere and let it flow. Don't kind of like what you were saying with the authors, right? Just let it flow. Whatever God gives you, whatever comes to your heart, whatever higher being you're listening, whatever's coming to your, coming to your head and your brain, Mm -hmm. write it down. Right? So once you write it down, then what can happen is two things. It could, you're going to look at the list, go, Oh yeah. I thought the sun was beautiful out today. Maybe it was raining, whatever. But, and that list could be things you want to do for yourself. Could be a things to do list. Oh my gosh, I forgot I got to do that. Take those things and put it on a different piece of paper and then throw that paper away. Because then you are dumping out that stuff is that noise in between your ears, right? And then, right. You start, and then as you do that, what I found and what I was sharing with her as I was journaling, then I found myself brain dumping about certain areas of my life you know, my business, my husband, my kids, my friends, you know, those areas of my life, I started writing about it. And then it became, I was journeying about myself, like, what, what are my dreams? What are my goals? What are my visions? And I started writing those out. And then it, what was really great, it was like, like you said, you know, you work with your authors. It's kind of like that story of the things that I love, the people that I love, and the people I need to release the things I needed to release so, exactly. you know, that journaling comes to fruition and, and ch- can really change your life. And if you are listening, you don't know how to journal. I hope that you just think about that, that brain dumping is something simple to do. So I think sometimes people don't understand that it's a natural course of, of your life because the only difference between you finding someone to tell your problems to is that instead of bringing another person into it, you're using the journal to tell the story. Uh, my second book, Walking on Water in My Stilettos, was about a season of change that I went through in my life and how God strengthened my faith walk in the process. And in that book, at the end of each chapter, you'll see journal entries from the the 18 months that I went through this, this period of change so that people will begin to see and recognize that all I did was put pen to paper and started talking about the things that I was dealing with, how I was feeling, um, the things that were impacting my world at that time and and what it did for me in that moment. Because I think uh, we don't realize that when we go through things, you may let go of what happened, but you'll never let go of how it made you feel until you give yourself permission to release it. I I love that you gave that. You have to let go. You, you got to let go. Of that. You got to release it. Per, per, give yourself permission to release it. And I love to always talk about you have these file cabinets in the front of your head, yes. right? But deep in the back is really where the emotions are. And the file cabinet's holding it and blocking you. And if you start writing it and start releasing it, then you can start deleting the things that are in the file cabinet as well and, and be like, okay, we're going to get rid of this stuff. And we're not going to, you know, we're going to let it go, let it go. Right. I always like to say, let go and let God, but let go, whatever you believe in, you know, and I think it's so powerful that we do that because it's important for our self-care. It's important that we do that because otherwise we get stressed out. We have anxiety, you know, right. I mean, we, you, you, it, it's sad if you're, you know, this episode is actually being recorded right after we lost Twitch. You know, I love uh-huh. this young man. He, he was so powerful and so energetic and you know, if we don't do those things to, to release ourselves, it can over it can overwhelm us. And you know, and right. and if things aren't going right in our life, 
if we can't release it and or talk to somebody, like it's okay. I think we used to have this big taboo about, oh, I can't go talk to anybody. They're going to know my stuff. I can't go, you know, ha we had this taboo. I know when I grew up, it was like, oh, you're going to a therapist. Why? You know, it's like such a big thing. And now I think we've come forward in the, since the pandemic, especially that mental, mental fitness and mental health is so powerful. And some of these things that we're talking about with self-care and writing it down, you know, is really, really important in journaling. Um, and then like getting your nails done, spending time with those that you love. It's, you know, and here's the thing. People are listening might be going, yep, I don't have money for my nails. Yep. I don't have children to go hang out with. That's okay. You don't have to have money to go get your nails done. Self-care. Sometimes my husband and I, we just sit down and go, okay, what movie want to, what movie want to watch tonight? We just go, we don't know. We put on Netflix and we'll pick a movie. You know, it can be as simple as that. If you have children at home, self-care can be, and Michelle, you probably have done this with your grandkids a couple of times. I've met even your kids when they were probably younger is did you ever find yourself sitting there and watching a silly show with them? Oh yeah. That that's self-care. Would you agree? Yes. But I think too, people fail to realize that self-care is as simple as you shutting off all of your electronics and going and taking a bath, going and taking a hot shower going to do something where you disconnect from all of the things that normally take your attention to give your body an opportunity to relax and to breathe. Um, before I had the money to go get my nails done, I did them myself. So it may be that you just sit there and give yourself a mani-pedi and you spend that time, you know, even in that learning how to affirm ourselves. Because when I went through that 18 months of, of season of change that I went through, anytime anybody came over my house, they was like, what is all these stickies on the mirror? Oh, that's all of my affirmations. Because I would put an affirmation up and I would read that affirmation out loud so that I would hear it every day to help build my self-esteem up, to help build my confidence up, to help me see myself the way that God sees me. Because I was on the Bible study, I think it was yesterday, and one of the ladies was saying that how it's supposed to go is supposed to go God and then family, and I stopped her. I said, no, that's not right. It's God, it's you, and then it's family. Because if we don't learn how to fill up our cups and allow God to be the one that's filling them up or whoever you serve, fill that cup up, because what's in the cup is for you. What flows out of the cup is for everybody else. You have to find ways to fill your cup up. That cup is full of love and joy and peace and understanding and self-assurance and self-acceptance. And so when you have all of that, it's easier for you to play all the roles. Let's face it. We as women play so many roles in a day that if men had to do it, they would go stark raving mad. OK, and so you you're a mother, you're a daughter, you're a sister, you're a wife, you are a significant other, you're an employee, you're a business owner. You have all of these roles to play. But the main person and, and the main ingredient and in all of that is you. So you have to make sure that you are taken care of on a regular basis. And the best way to do that is to put in place regular self-care activities. Yeah, I love, you're so right. I mean, that's why I talk about, you know, if you don't fill your cup up or if you don't put your cape on first, it's just like on the airplane, they tell you, if you don't put your mask just, on first, yeah. you're, you know, you're not doing your self-care the way you need to and should to. And I love that you did the affirmations too. And, and that's a simple way to get started with affirmations. And I remember Megan Trainer just recently was sharing about how she had had her child and she had the C-section and it really resonated with me. And how she didn't feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she was working with a coach or professional person. And they said, listen, every morning you're getting up in front of the mirror and you're going to stand there and you're going to stand back and you're going to tell yourself I'm beautiful. You're going to find something on your body that's beautiful about yourself. And she said, I think it was like the first week or two weeks. She's like, I ain't doing this. This is nothing. And I think she said, finally, it clicked. She was finding things on herself that was beautiful, including the C-section, because guess what? She yeah. has this beautiful baby, right? And I was like, gosh, I so get that. That's what I coach the women I work with on about. Wear your cape first. Find something beautiful within you. That's why, I mean, behind me, th those that are listening, you can't see. 
I have this affirmation wall behind me. You know, it says make today amazing, be awesome, dream big, you know, follow your heart because that's so important that you do those things for yourself first, because otherwise you can't go be an author with Michelle. You know, you, you can't, and you can, you can be an author, but you can't be the author you're meant to be. You can be a mom, but you can't be the mom, the wife, the employee and everything (laughs) that you're meant to be. And I think, you know, when we had COVID, we talked about that everybody was getting an understanding, wow, I missed my family or wow, I'm living with them 24 seven, right? They were going through those emotions. And now as we're post pandemic and coming through it, we are somewhat getting back in that crazy world of busyness again. And we need to stop. We need to pull that back and be like, what did I like about COVID being at home all day long? What didn't I like? And what do I want to incorporate that I enjoy doing? And, you know, it could be a date night with your spouse. It could be a date night with your kids. I mean, I had this great, great, amazing man that I worked with in Virginia, where I used to live. And I would see him at the, at the like um, coffee shop every like Wednesday, at least every week I saw him same day a week. And he would be with one of his kids. And I said, you know, I asked him, I go, what, what is that about? And I didn't have my kids yet. And he said, I do that every day so that my kid, he goes, I started that when they were babies, even when they couldn't talk and they're just cooing. I would take my child, my son, daughter, and we would go to the coffee shop because I create this safe space that they knew they could tell me anything they wanted to tell me. I was spending time with them. I was enjoying my time. I was giving myself time for my day as well at the same time. But most importantly, I was allowing my wife some time for self-care. And I think it's important, like you said, that if men had, you know, we love our men, we love men are amazing, but if they had to balance everything that we as women guiltly put on ourselves that I, I agree. I don't think some of them can handle it. And that's why I call CEO moms. And I've given this credit to my sister on Melissa is that I went to go visit her one time and she was like, come on upstairs. Sean's got to put his clothes away. Sean was only like four or five years old, you guys. And I was like, he's putting his clothes away. He's full. She goes, yeah, he's got to learn how to do this. I, this is, uh, we all live in this house. We're all a team. And that's why I came up with CEO mom, because I was like, You're running a business of the house. And so Uh it's important to teach our kids young to do things for themselves and give yourself that time. So, you know, even if it's like Michelle described, even if it's a group, you go in, you know, you don't have to do every day a week, but maybe three days a week, you go into a group and you take time for yourself. Make make sure it's a group that's pouring into you. Don't just join a group, you know, I think that's so, so important. And, you know, for self-care and, where I, you know, I call sheroes because I think women are amazing and they are the heroes of their surroundings or life, their family, whatever. And even if you don't have children, you still have the business of taking care of you. And right. if we get so busy of taking care of our career, our business or whatever, we're not taking that time for ourselves. Would you agree, Michelle? I agree. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been fun. You guys, oh gosh, every time we do this, it, it time flies. But everybody knows if you're if you're watching or if you're listening on the radio show or listening on the podcast, we um, we have these amazing questions they are called better questions, better life. And I don't get paid. I get nothing back. I get no affiliate costs. But if you want to learn more, go to better questions, better life dot com. But we're going to shuffle these cards. And we're going to ask Michelle to tell me when to stop. And she's going to answer one of the questions. Um, and so, Michelle, before we do this. I would like you to share with everybody where they can they find you? What's the best way to find you? Um, the best way to find me, you can always find me on social media for Michelle P as in Paul Jones. Um, that's probably the easiest way to find me there. Or you can go to my website, www.michellep as in Paul Jones.com or bledsopublishing.com. And so um, both of those have emails associated with them. So you can hit the contact and all of that information will come to me. And they even, I even have opportunities if you want a free discovery call with me. It's a free 30 minute discovery call where we just talk about what it is that you're interested in doing. You can go on to either one of those websites and schedule it and then we'll have an opportunity to talk. I love that. So make sure, especially if you're thinking about being coming an author or writing a book, make sure you reach out to Michelle. And I'm, I know she's going to give you some great information and training as well. So 
I'm going to start shuffling, Michelle. You're going to tell me when to stop, okay? And then you're going to answer the okay. questions. So here we go, everybody. Okay, stop. Ah, she got the middle of the pack. Ooh, Michelle, this is a good one. How are you present? I learned how to love myself. That was how I learned how to be present in the world is having the opportunity to show myself the same type of love that I would show outward. So I, when God took me through that season of change that I went through, he showed me myself through his eyes. And he showed me that regardless of my idiosyncrasies, regardless of my flaws, regardless of what I don't do right, regardless of what I do right, he never stops loving me. And so in that, I had to learn how to love Michelle unconditionally, regardless. And so that is how I've learned how to show up. That is how I learned how to present myself to the world. And I let people know I'm not perfect. Just like everybody else, I have a past. And so even though I have a past, I do not allow that past to define me in this moment, nor does it dictate my future. And so every day I make choices and decisions to show that love that I have for myself so that in the way that I treat myself and how you see how I treat me, I'm teaching you how to treat me. And so I'm not creating an atmosphere to where I have to be somebody that I'm not in order for you to accept me. I love that. And that's how I love that you know, finding yourself and taking care of yourself. It goes back to what we've been saying about self-care all this time too, right? right? Be present with yourself. It's, it's so powerful. And, you know, I, I took me a long time to be like, I need to take care of me first. You know, I tried for 10 years to have a family. Um, we finally we adopted our oldest son, Matthew, and then we struggled again to have a family. We had in vitro and we were able to have our youngest son, Nate, and we just said, we're not going to try anymore because it was just way too much, um, if for, way too much on my body. I had too many challenges and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I love my two boys that I have. It's just amazing. And I love the life I have. Right. But I also, because I just tried for so long to have a family in my head, I was telling myself, I have to do everything for them. And that's why I came up with the Shiro method, because in the Shiro method, we talk about putting your cape on first. And learning to say no to others, learning to say it doesn't align with what I want to do to be present in my life. And right. also we talk about, you know, what is your legacy? We, you know, I asked a hard question and those that are listening, think about this. If you were not promised tomorrow and it was gone, what would you do today for yourself? If you could only do something for yourself today. And then also at your funeral, when your family and friends come up to share about you and then all they could do is say what they saw you do for yourself, what are they going to say? And when I started thinking about that question and started going, my family's going to say I was doing for everybody else. My family's going to say I went to every event I was asked to help out with. They were going to say that I, I went to you know all their games, all their things, but they never saw me do stuff for myself. And when I finally said, I need to do something for myself. I came up with a method of how to do it. And I call it the Shiro method. And we talk about what is your vision? Find your vision. What is it? What's really like, okay, yeah, you want to go travel, but why do you want to travel? And where do you want to travel to? And how are you going to do it? We like really delve down into what's that feeling behind what you want to do. You know, why do you want to start a business? Really think about why is that? And then we start talking about how to communicate that. Because if, if we can't communicate to our family and friends about what are the things that we want to do and why we want to do it, then we really, we're not being honest with ourselves either. And how do we communicate to ourselves? Right. And I love what you said about the affirmations. And one of the big things that I do is every morning I look in the mirror and I say to myself, I am beautifully and wonderfully made good, better, and different. Everything that's about to come my way, I will learn from a lesson of it. And I will take that lesson and pay it forward. And, you know, many know that I'm listening here. I lost my son in July at 25 years old. And I'm, I'm learning a lot of lessons through this. And I'm paying forward some of the stuff already. And I'm receiving from others as well. And sometimes it's hard for self-care is to sit back and also receive. And right. so, yeah. And so 
so Michelle, I love you, the way you answered that question is, you know, how are you being present with yourself is so powerful. And, you know, I'm so excited we had you on the show today. I'm so excited to, I can't wait to watch some of the authors and you know, I know you're going to share those with me and send those out to me so we can promote them as well. And I just want to remind everybody that if you want to learn more about Michelle, we're going to put all her social media links on here as we release everything. And if you really are looking to do something for yourself, find a way to do something for self-care every Sunday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. We have this amazing community of women. It's called the Shira League. We just get together. It's on Zoom. It's not recorded. And we just talk about how our week went, how our week is coming up, what's brought us joy, what are our challenges, where do we need help with, how can we help others? And it's just a great community of Shira women who just want to make sure they're being present for yourself, as you said, Michelle. So thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us. And as we close out the show, I always say you come into this world as this rough oyster on the outside, but on the inside, you are this beautiful pearl. And I know today you're going to go out and find your inner pearl to greatness. Have a great day. Hello, sunshine. Good to see you again. Had to walk out to let you.